If you're auditioning for a Tarantino movie or a Spike movie, what do you have to be aware of? What do you have to be conscious of? Genre. A little bit. They're genre benders, though, right? So any Tarantino movie is drama slash comedy slash this, right? So again, there's a darkness, but there's something else. I know Quentin focuses on the close-up dialogue, and then Spike does that extreme, extreme close-up. Okay, yeah, but you wouldn't have to worry about that in the audition. What would you have to worry about? Style. Style? What do you mean by style, Dan? Well, there's a certain way that people speak and... and pace to their, their films? Yeah, there's a pace, there's an understanding of, of what, in terms of how the characters are, how they build the character life, that's very specific, right? So, when you think of Tarantino movies, when you think of his characters, what do you think of? Dark. Dark, good, Violent. what else? Gritty. Violent. Gritty, what else? Uh, Quirky. A little off, oh. right? Yeah. A little yeah. crazy, maybe even a little basic psychotic, what else? Violent. Violent. violent, absolutely, that there's either a violence or a rage hidden and buried in them. When you think of Spike's movies, what do you think of? When you think of the characters, what, do you, what does it make you think of? Urban passion. <laughs> you can say black here. It's all right, man. You can say black here. We, we, we a black studio. We're white people. <laughs> I love it. Every time we get oh, into okay. this, we be talking about poor Dion. <laughs> white people leaving Dion's ass out. We love, we love the white people. <laughs> Urban inner city. Urban inner city, city. yeah. Survival, right? That most of Spike's characters are about something that they are either overcoming or trying to survive, okay? okay. When you think of another, like when you think of Marvel movies, what what type of characters? These this is always good to know, and I tell people to watch a lot of movies, watch a lot of TV. So when you go into these auditions, you have a sense of the character, the understanding of what the character is, what they're struggling against, what their conflicts are with that specific style. Okay, so when you think of Marvel movies, what what type of characters do you think? Superheroes. Superheroes. What else? Action, so usually they're what? Buff. But <laughs> yes, yes, Isha, usually they're buff. Something else, what else? And again, this is for auditions. If I'm playing a bad guy in a Marvel show, like a Luke Cage or some other, uh, other show, what do I have to be aware of? They're usually what? There's an anger, there's a political perspective about what the character, in terms of their superhero powers, what the character is doing. Sometimes the power is hidden. hidden Sometimes the power is hidden. If I'm going up for like, uh, let's say the show that me and Omar are just talking about power, what do I have to be aware of? Drug dealing. Huh? Drug dealing. Drug dealing, but prison, mm -hmm. right? That I'm locked up, that there's a sense of a criminal element with that. What do you think, why is this so important in character work for auditions? And this is really, a lot of people go, man, they were doing great work, but it didn't fit into the style of the director, right? And a couple of friends of mine who auditioned for The Wire, interestingly enough, didn't have that concept season four, season five. So they got there season four, season five, and they kept, they kept auditioning and they kept getting called back, but they didn't book it because they weren't aware of the style. So what do you think the style does to you in terms of building character work? For your audition. Well, I know this, because I'm classically trained. That when I do Shakespeare, the style of pulls is on, it happens. Absolutely. Because, you know, there's certain stressing, the rhythm. Yep. And who the, the meter. Character, and the, the meter, and then who they, you know, they, they're usually are people of scale. Yeah. And some are not. But for the most part, the, the, the leading character of scale came yeah. do. Absolutely. Oh. And in that presentation, what do you have, what do you do? Like when especially and I tell this pe to people for Shakespeare all the time, right? I have to have some level of historical context. Yeah. Right? I have to have some understanding of the poetry, yeah. not just what the content of the poetry is, but how the poetry is delivered. Right? So part of that is meter, part of that is understanding actual vocabulary definition, part of that is being specific and clear that my body is in a connection to a time period that is very specific, right? Like, I can't play a king 
without understanding a well, legal better, sense better, of who I am. Keep your butt up. Yeah, exactly. Or oh, my friend says, hold a twig in your ass, right? Just squeeze. <laughs> squeeze, and then you can do this all day. <laughs> right? And then this happens. Right? It just happens. Just keep that twig. Right? Just keep that twig and you're good. But there's, there's a sense, guys, of the physicality of character. It's true. The physicality of the character is very specific to style. Okay? That the way in which you present physically the character for definitely these film directors you want to start to be very conscious and specific of they see the minute they see you right so a lot of the time when you get into an on-camera audition for these shows if you physically don't represent the style of the show no matter how brilliant your work is they will not they will not cast you and you'll sit there and go, well, what didn't I do? I had a character, I was clear, I had an intention, I knew a moment-to-moment -moment life. But the physical presentation of what that show is about, no, right? So there's a lot of people that when they get into the idea of cop, right, play that idea instead of allowing what specific nature of the police officer that they're playing and how that physically represents to show up on camera. And that is absolutely critical, okay? That there's a physical representation of the style of the show, not necessarily of the genre. Why not? What's um, genre? Genres like comedy, drama, oh. horror, right? So you don't have to necessarily be genre aware as much as you have to be style aware. Do you guys get that difference? What when you think of genre, you think of a horror movie. I don't want you walking in there sweating, <laughs> terrifyingly scared, and going, "Okay, I'm ready." You know, but I do, I do want you to be specific about what the the themes and the style of what that type of movie or show relate, how you connect to it in terms of the character and how that physically shows up in your body. Okay, because a lot of the time you forget, you know, when you see Spike's, when you see Spike's work, there's a physicality that he's looking for. There's a physical presence that he's looking for. It's the same with Tarantino. It's the same with Scorsese. They were looking for very specific physical representations of the character that you have to be specific about in terms of understanding the style and then connecting that style back to you. Do you guys get that difference? Mm -hmm. um, what happens if you go overboard? Because yeah. my the first uh, film, I, I I can't remember the name of it. I went in for I was playing a gang member it was, uh, called the Vampires. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I went in. I did the thing. The casting director says to me afterwards. He says, "You got to come back and because they were scared of you." Yeah. Yeah. They said that. They didn't know if you were going to kill them. Going, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or were you just doing a characterization? Yeah, right. You know, so they, you have to come in regular. Oh, uh, absolutely. You know? <laughs> so. Well, I always say you got to learn how to turn it on. Right. You got to be right. Harrison up until are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Do you get me? Okay. Because sometimes if I come in as character, they don't mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. the yeah. work. Do you get me? They right. go, okay. So I, you know, like, what, what do you. You know, mm. what you doing, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, and there's a friend of mine years ago who, everyone see the movie The Warriors? Yeah. Who auditioned for The Warriors, right? Mm -hmm. And he came in with full gully, right? He looked like a street kid. I was like, hi, I'm Anton Pagan, nice to meet you, how are you? Right, 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 it's great, right. let's go, are you ready to shoot? Yeah, man, you know, and then just turned it. Do you know, so they were like, they felt comfortable meeting the actor. So that when the switch turned on, they really saw the, the character out. development. And you have to balance that. There's sometimes, look, man, you, you, you have to go, I got to first take care of myself, right, number one. I got to be able to prepare in a way that serves me even when I get into the room. But I also have to be conscious that this is still a job, that they still got to know the person, that they still wa might want a level of interaction with you. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Look, and the other thing I, I always tell people, you know, they don't want to shake hands. They want you, Sometimes they just want you to get to it. Mm -hmm. But they want you to at least be present enough that when you come in and out of it, you can hear them, you can listen to their notes, 
You can make adjustments. Do you know? And I always tell people that's the way that you know you you know you're good when a casting director is asking you to make an adjustment because that means they believe in you. There's something that they're they're rooting for you to get there. Do whatever there is for them. Do you know what I mean? So you have to balance it, but you also have to go. There is a sense of something in my body that has to be character related. That if it's not physical, I could lose a part because I'm sitting there in this kind of crazy depth of emotion or understanding of text, but it didn't show up in my body, and therefore we don't know if you fit right for the show, for the movie, or for you know, or for anything else. So you have to know the balance. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. What was your question, Drew? Oh, my question was, if, what if you don't know the director? Like, if you don't know the director? Research. No, no, I'm saying, like, when you're going with Research. PR, Research. Look, you, you, even if it's like they've done one or two movies, mm -hmm. it's worth looking them up. It's worth seeing those films. No, because sometimes they don't tell you who's directing the project. That's what I mean. Yeah, but usually if you go, hey, if it's a television show, you can look up the show. Okay. Do you get me? If it's a movie, an independent film, you get to go, there's an emphasis on character in independent film. There's, an, and there's not necessarily a constrictionist view of text on indie films. You don't have to necessarily be word perfect on indie films. Television, you do, right? If I go, okay, it's a big studio film, and I get the sense of, okay, this is a romantic comedy, it's not that I gotta be aware, but there's a certain way that my body and presentation needs to show up. That I'm not necessarily an intimidating force. Do you know what I mean? That I'm more in a sexuality, I'm more in my charisma. These things you can start to look up. Like I sometimes look, if it's a Bruckheimer project, you might not know the director, but you know the producer. Do you get me? So you gotta you gotta get to do a little research. And it's not that you wanna, as Har as we just said with Harrison, you don't want to go crazy with it, but as Dion said, you want to know the style. You want to be, oh, okay, wait a minute, if this is a Spike movie, there's a certain thing that he's going for. There's a certain way his characters present themselves physically that you want to be conscious of. Do you know what I mean? Now, how, how do you extrapolate that information from two to three pages of text? Well, that's the trick, right? If, okay, I got this sense of this guy is struggling, he's maybe a blue collar worker, da 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 da. Well, how does that show up in my body? Well, that's the utilization of your imagination and the connection to the, the actual circumstance of the scene. And that, the more specific and detailed you are, the easier it is to operate. What was your question, Nishi? Uh Can you step in as the character and then break it after you, you're done? I, it's sometimes you can. It's, it really depends on the casting director. Like, you know, sometimes, like, right now, what's her name? Um, Marcy. What's her name? Marcy Phillips? Marcy doesn't like that. Because she wants to know you. Do you know what I mean? Suzanne Ryan, I don't think, cares. Sometimes. Do you know? Like, it's also the people who want to get to it. Like, if they like, if there's some casting directors, like, let's go. Because they, you've seen, you know, there's, you know, they've seen two, 25, 35 people before you. And they're like, let's go. So, therefore, you go right in. You have to kind of, you kind of decide for yourself. I'd say I'd rather you be in character in the waiting room, in the train, all the way, you know, in the morning, and then be able to snap it off real quick and just say, hey, uh, my name is Isha, da, 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 and then go. Do you know what I mean? I'd rather you be able to snap it on, snap it off, do you know, than, than to be in all day. There's certain directors like me, when I, when I cast people, I don't care. Because I want you to be in character the whole time. Like Jim Jarmusch is like that, or was like that. Where anytime time you come in in character, he starts to see it that quick. So indie film directors sometimes like that. I heard Coogler was like that. I heard Ryan Coogler was I like think that. Some, I think some casting directors and directors appreciate it, right? Especially yeah. if it's a heavy scene, they know you got to get to it. You can drop it. in, yeah. yeah. So they'd rather see you come in at the end. Yeah, I would say be... Cut it out. Yeah. 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 I think it, you got to determine it for yourself. Definitely not for TV. TV do not do that, cause they, you know, it, it, for them, they're, they're not necessarily just looking at your acting; they're looking at you. Yeah, it's weird. Do you, it's really strange. They're trying to see if you fit what their type is for that show, for and especially if it's episode based. They're like, okay, is he see for this episode or if he's series reoccurring, does he fit that mold? But for film, yeah, I mean, you got to determine what you need too. 
look, I'd rather you do you. Do you know what I mean? Like, look, I need to stay in character than you stay in character and take the risk of offending. Do you know what I mean? Then not. And then sit there and go, well, you know, my teacher told me I had to, I had to, I had to cut it off. And now I'm not going to get the part because of Carl, the fucking something. You know, I'd, I'd, rather, I'd rather you not be like that. But again, I think, Isha, for you, you're now getting a sense, and as I said to everybody, the more that you come back to yourself, if you can get aware before you go, you know, in some level of reconnecting with yourself to let everything go, that requires, right, you snapping on, snapping off. And that gives you a sense of freedom and your creativity and talent, then get, you know, get to a place. But again, it's, it's, it's determined, like for theater, you know, for Camille Hickman, she won't mind. Like Lincoln Center, you can come in full character. Jordan Thaler, he, Jordan Thaler, same way. For the public, you can go in full character because they're just bringing you on stage. Do you know what I mean? So you can stay in character. You can speak your, your, your name as the character. Do you know what I mean? But to be able to turn it on, turn it off, that's entirely up to you. Yeah. So it also sounds like you really have to know which medium you're auditioning. Oh, absolutely. So between, so there's a... a for theater, it's one thing. For television, it's something else. For film, it's absolutely. Else. Like for for TV, you want to be very specific. That okay, it's type. That's they're they're they're, they're looking at a type. Do you okay. know which is why for television, there's a lot of Valencias in the room. Right? right, and there's always, always your friend in the room. Like, always. you got fucking yeah, you yeah. Know, hey, girl, girl you know what I mean? Yeah. So you got the TV yeah. is always type based, right? Because they're really looking to see if you fit for whatever those whatever those scenes are. For film, you can really go character based. In theater, you can go character based. Like I'd rather you go in because theater, you got first of all, you're on right. stage alone, right? There's there's they're in the back somewhere. They don't, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you got to learn how to be That's out that. and project, right. right? But I'd rather that physicality show up. There's some theater casting directors now that I heard, I don't know, Camille didn't say that this was true, but that I heard that have you stand in one place now that you can't move. Do you know what I mean? So you got to be aware of that too. I mean, for film the, the and television, the killer is they're digging you here, right? And you got, even if your character is moving, you got to stay stationary and grounded so how do I, does my energy still send out that I'm still moving around without moving my without feet moving. do you know so yeah I, you got to know format you always want to be aware of format especially nowadays because you know if you don't know format honey they think that you're only this mm -hmm. they'll go oh she's only a theater actress because they look at your resume and they you know what I mean they go oh she has more theater credits than she does television therefore you know so right. yeah. Okay. Okay. So guys, please, the, the best way to understand all this is to see a bunch of stuff. That's always keep yourself proactive, keep looking around, keep watching shows, keep watching television. There's uh July is always the time where the new uh they, they start collecting for new development for TV. So the more that you inhale these producers and what these shows are and these showrunners, the clearer you're going to be when you get an audition. You go, oh, I know this showrunner. These producers, I've seen these shows for, so I know the style of the show. And in that way, you're going to be able to make adjustments that really serve you, okay? As opposed to just going in there and thinking that it's just character. It's never just character. It's physical representation of character as well as your intimate and circumstantial understanding of the scene, okay? So don't neglect either, all right? Everything's important, especially in TV. You gotta really show up physically, okay? Are there new people here? Any new people? Okay, so this is how this class works, right? We go in two stages. First stage is preparation. So what we do is an eyeline drill. Omar will take you through it. He's gonna give you a spot on the wall to look at. What you all want to do is, when you, when, whatever he gives you, you want to invest in your imagination so much because film's always about the audience sees what you see, right? Invest in your imagination so much that it has physical repercussions, that it leads to behavior. He gives you three different things to look at, okay? After we do that, we do a tension and release drill, which is critical because to understand that ease is absolutely a priority on film, okay? 
will squeeze your whole body and release and scream out which one today? Chris. He came late. Chris? He came late. Chris. All right, so it's fuck you, Chris. All right? So we're doing this, and you're releasing your voice and trying also to utilize it to get it out of your head, okay? Then we'll give you the script. You have about a 30, 45 minutes to prepare it. Know that the, re the, the stuff that we gave you in the eye line corresponds to the intimacy in the script. That's for you to figure out how it works, okay? After we do that, we'll call you in two by two. It's a two shot again today. You'll shoot, and then we'll critique, and I'll make fun of you. Does that sound good? All right, good. Let's line it up. <laughs>